Oh wait, I said balls, didn't I? Okay. One more. There you are. And that's what eggy balls are made of. Welcome to the Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and uh, I hope you like that <laughs> little change in the intro. I just got a, a wild idea and did it. Anyway, we're going to go through a lot of different stuff today. We're going to do the Seventh Amendment before we get too far into stuff. We'll try to have a Bubba joke, and uh, we'll try to complete the uh, HDPE plastic injection job, which at every turn seems to come up with a new surprise, you know. But uh, before we before we get into the into the injection or the, the jokes or any of that kind of stuff, we're gonna just go ahead and go with the, the Seventh Amendment. And uh, the Seventh Amendment reads: In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed twenty dollars, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court. Of the United States than according to the rules of the common law and they make a lot of references to common law and since we uh, sort of got started by the English English common law is uh, is the basis for an awful lot of our uh, judicial system and uh, in fact we stuck to it and they went away from it as near as I can tell uh, I is according to my reading the only country in the in the world where you're guaranteed a a right by a trial of a trial by jury is the United States. They, I don't think they do it anymore in in Britain or Canada or Australia or, or any of the former colonies of, of you know of Britain. But uh, we still do it here. And I'm going to put a, a link, hopefully right down there or over there or maybe up there or somewhere. I'm going to try to put a link to a website that. Uh, has an interesting article on on the Seventh Amendment, and they'll explain to you the whole thing, and uh, explains to you one of the things is that no re-examination of your trial means you of your facts in your trial means you can't be tried twice for the same offense, which is pretty handy because I'm sure there's lots of governments around the world that if they don't get you the first time, they'll just run you back in with some brand new facts, and they'll get you eventually so what uh, I really believe that's a good uh, defense for people when I did the Second Amendment I uh, I had good material that I should have used and I somehow I forgot it but I didn't bring it up but it's referred to as the Battle of Athens or sometimes as the McMahon County War and Reading right out of Wikipedia here, it says the Battle of Athens, sometimes called the McMahon County War, was a rebellion led by citizens in Athens and Etoba, Tennessee, United States, against the local government in August 1946. The citizens, including some World War II veterans, accused the local officials of predatory policing, police brutality, political corruption, and voter intimidation. And the event is sometimes cited by firearms ownership advocates as an example of the value of the Second Amendment in combating tyranny. And I can tell you that uh, this really happened and they straightened them out. You know, it seems that uh, the sheriff grabbed all the uh, all the the uh, poll uh, tickets there on voting day and took them into the courthouse or into the end of the county jail and wouldn't let his opposition count the uh, the votes 
and they they already knew from experience that uh, that he was probably voted out, but he was going to say he wasn't, and nobody could do anything about it if they didn't stand up to him. All right, so now we'll uh, now that we've done that. I think we'll put the Bubba joke at the end again. It seemed to work pretty good before, so. Now we'll go on ahead and uh, start working working on the HDP. Believe it or not, rednecks can work in uh, millimeters just just as well as anything else. It just it just adds new dimensions to your screw ups, you know. And you shouldn't be limited. You need to you know seek out new ground. Go where no redneck has gone before. So I'm going to mark this thing up and try to build this little hopper to go on the side of the of the tubing and i'll come back once i get it really messed up good and show you i put a little bit of dicum on there and now don't hate me chuck please don't hate me i, I brush it and all messed up still it's still working all right just just don't hate me all right okay so my metal is uh a millimeter and a half instead of a millimeter like it calls for and I've got it marked off here I can get two pieces out of this which will get the two sides and the front part out of this and I'm doing this all at about 86 percent of scale from what he's got because the metal I guess just not as long as he used for his is what's called for in the drawing but if I can find something to cut this stuff, we're in business. Now that's not the exact placement of the hopper, but that's uh, in the neighborhood. I'll have to move it down to about somewhere around there maybe. And uh, so I guess the first step would be to go ahead and cut the hole inside the tubing for the plastic to go through and then locate the hopper in a manner that makes it uh, fit. And I had to cut out a little piece to fill this here, which is this little guy here. It was easier to do than it looked like. And so I guess my next step now is to cut the hole for the plastic to go in the side. I've already tried, you know, the heat band on there, and the, the heat bands will fit. So, on with the cutting a hole. Well, here's another fine mess I've got myself into. Welding up the uh, the hopper. <laughs> I managed to put one side in the wrong place. This piece here, right here, uh, should have been welded to this piece right here. This would have been the uh, the outer part of the of the uh, hopper. Instead of this being the outer part, this right here, this should have been the uh, outer part. And this was one wing of it, and this was the other wing that should have been off over here. But it's got kind of a hopper shape to it, and I'm gonna make that fit down on the pipe and weld it down because I I just don't want to cut that sucker loose and start over so and it'll look like a redneck did it no doubt it's not going to be Randy Richard quality but that's what we're stuck with here dang it seems like something's always going wrong okay I kept thinking what would Randy Richard do and I knew he wouldn't do like I was fixing to do so Right there in the trash can, there's the mistake. It's, it's going to the landfill. And I got a uh, thinner piece of uh, sheet metal that I'm going to fold instead of welding. And that should work out a lot better. I figure I can fold that right there after I've laid out the stuff. And then the amount of welding will just be welding it onto that tube. That will make things a lot better all the way around. Cut down on the amount of ugly looking welds that I put out. Okay, um, Lance, in case you're watching, I got me a cowboy, I mean a cowboy, camouflage hat too. So, there you go. I'm not being left out. I need to clamp this thing on the things. So, 
I figured this was a pretty good kind of clamp, although this is for one inch pipe. And this is actually about a one inch tubing, but that's the inside. And as you can see, it's, it's loose. So I'm going to have to wrap something around the pipe to make these little boogers fit, but anyway, they can, they can be mounted quite easily because of the type of construction they have. And they're a little bit flimsy, but I'm pretty sure once they're screwed together and all that they'll hold on just fine. These are pipe supports, what they're supposed to be, but they'll, they'll do the job to hold this thing on. And I'll show you where I'm gonna put it. I, I'm hoping that things are sized about right that I can put one down here and one up here to hold that tubing. And then back here is where I'll put the support for the uh, for the plunger that will push the plastic out. And the, uh, the dial will be mounted down below. So with any luck, all this stuff will fit the way I got it planned. Sometimes things work well, out. There's the beginnings of the, of the funnel to get down into the dumping in the metal. But I think I want to, whoa, this thing is moving on me. I'm going to cut off about this much of the top of that funnel. Give me more room for my clamps. They're taking up too much room. And uh, probably probably one more video worth and we'll have this done. Well, it's officially hotter than the devil in Texas now. We've hit the official 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity off and on. So I think that's warm and humid. <laughs> of course it won't be long now they predicted maybe in a week or two we'd go above a hundred and be in the triple digits there so that's the way that it works in Texas anyway here here I'm going to take my little Dremel tool with a an abrasive disc and I'm going to cut that thing right across there and then I'm going to roll it over and cut that same amount off of both sides of the the little funnel that goes down inside there and once I've got that cut, I'll bring you right back. Well, I cut uh, about a half inch off of it. And I wanted from the top to the bottom here to be about four inches. And if you can see, it's, it's about four inches down to here to where all that nice rough welding's at. And the, uh, the piece I'm going to bolt it to is five inches. So I should have a lot of room above and below that to put those uh, pipe clamps. Now I'm, I may have to wrap something around this thing although the welding lumps there may take up the room. Alright so there's uh, how it's going to look when it's fastened on possibly. Uh, I hadn't necessarily intended to have the tube that high up but that might be just right you know I could get two heat bands down at the bottom along with that other one and that will probably be enough heated area as it is and I may just put it just like that I'm, I'm thinking so and with it being kind of kind of rough on the weld there it's pretty tight on the top clamp I still got to wrap something around the bottom clamp but now now to make the upright bracket all right so I got the the lever mostly made except for drilling the holes for where it attaches to the plunger which is not yet made so my next step now would be to make the little plunger that goes through there and the precious plastics drawing showed a, a solid piece about 20 something inches long or something and I'm going to make uh, sort of a, a little plug on the end of an all thread and maybe a little further up another little piece and that should be enough to push the plastic through uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get it done I think this could be described as probably the project from hell it, every time I turn around something's wrong and I've got to do something over again and welding this stupid little funnel on there was not a smart move. 
because it made little bumps and ridges and rusty looking spots and such right in that area right by the funnel <clears throat> so now I'm trying to decide what to do I keep making these little devices to I know you can't see a thing in there and I can't do anything about it but I'll show you what I've been doing here I've been darn it making these little spindles well, not trucks, spindles, things. I take these guys and staple a little piece of uh, emery cloth on it and go up in there trying to run it out. I've, I've been through five of these already, these pieces of wood, and uh, I still can't get the little piston to go past the funnel. It ain't, can't even get even with it because of the, of the crud in there. So I'm right now trying to decide whether I'm going to do some more of that. I've already been a couple hours or more, you know, sanding away with that stuff. Or if I'm just going to cut the end off of this thing and start over on the other tube. I've got, an, I've not, I've got another piece of tubing that I could use for this, and I just may do that. So... Anyway, I had already got all that stuff put together, had it on the frame, thought, oh, I'm just the day away from finishing up, tried to put the little piston down through the top of it, and it hit that rough spot made from my dirt dauber welding, and, and so I've been back over here working on this, and uh, you can see I cut several little spools out, because they don't last long. It's just one thing after another. Mr. Bozo lives over in the corner there, and he's helping every chance he gets. So I'm going to turn this off and try to figure out what's next. Well, I need to get uh, this little piece right here out of there so that I don't have to make it over again. So. We're going to take the saw to it and cut that sucker loose and put it in the lathe and cut the metal off from around it until I've got the got the little nozzle again and we'll put it into the other tube. I'm not sure if I'm going to weld it in or solder it in or what, but I, I think soldering it in would, would be easier. Anyway, let's get on with it. There it is, I'm ready to cut the pipe loose from the little plug. I won't make you guys watch that, I, I can hardly bear to watch it myself. Okay, so here we are, the piston fits relatively slick and smooth in the, in the rod there. I mean in the tube and that went down. Okay. So now that I've got uh, a tube that uh, that the piston will go through, I'll solder the the little fitting into the end of it and we'll figure out a way to make a funnel without welding it on there. Hose clamp it on or something. Or maybe I'll just stand there and spoon the plastic in until I figure out how to make it an easy to attach funnel. When a good thing happens by accident, I think they call it serendipity. I'm not sure. But anyway, I was going to make this uh, this nice little pin wrench, which uh, I was going to put two pins on it, which is traditional. And I drilled a hole here, and I was going to remove it over there and line it up in the next spot uh, for the next hole. And uh, guess what happened? I realized that if it just gets up against the center there, you know, if it gets up against the center, it will it will turn the thing just fine either way. So I can screw it in and unscrew it when it's full of plastic. And that'll make me happy. So if I turn it over, nice tight there, put another hole out here, 
and I may need to put two holes in this one but then who knows I may this has got a little hub to go against it maybe one hole is good enough here too but we're going to get on with that all right it's time to test this thing out and see if we let out the magic smoke or not or if it starts working so here we go I'll plug her into the power and we got it set for 200 degrees which is uh, Here's the set point, and this is how warm it thinks it is. So, we'll see what happens if, if I haven't done anything terribly wrong in setting it up. Alright, you see the, the little light on the left is uh, the one that shows, when that light's on the left, it shows that the power is going to the okay, heat the sleeves. And this thing doesn't just turn it on and off, it modulates, it flips on and off, on and off, on and off when it's trying to level out at the set point. Now the, the little light on the right is alarm one, and it's got alarm one and alarm two, but I don't use it for anything and it just happens to be right, that we're set it for undoubtedly at a point below that alarm or above it, one or the we other. We don't need to go much and, uh, any above that, I don't think. It took me about you know, 20 minutes of watching this to you know, see how it's going to work for it. Went on with it with the test. All right, let's see if we if we got anything out of there or not. Should be able to see the the mold. See what happens when I unscrew it. Did it fell off or not? Well, it's got plastic in it. Woo. You can see it's starting to drip out the bottom. I've got a bucket of water to catch it. See what happens if I drop this in the water. That was hot. <laughs> Woo. It's still hot. That is still hot. I'm going to get pliers. Got the mold out. I'll just let it sit there watching a the plastic drip. Or maybe this would be better. Here we go. Unscrew this little booger. see what we've got if anything here we go it's almost loose it is loose okay come on huh it's stuck just too too high up in there my screw was too high up Got to do it over again. That burn. All right, this time I'll use a propane torch and heat that mold before I squirt anything in it. I think that's a, a weak point. It looks like a temperature in the range of 400 degrees is what my uh, controller likes, at least with this number <coughs> of heat bands on it, <coughs> or heat sleeves, actually called heat sleeves. So let's, uh, let's try and make another try at building a knob. I've got some heat on that mold so, so that it won't freeze the plastic as it comes in. At least, hopefully it won't. And I've got a heat gun. Water back under the 
plastic. Try unscrewing it while it's still hot. Well, maybe not. It's hot. Whew! That was hot. It's, uh, it didn't get full of plastic. I can see from looking at it here. You can see down in the hole there. It, uh, it didn't fill up. There may be a lot of work on this before it works out right. One thing for sure, I've got it stuck and I can't open it. So I'm gonna work on all right. Let's just dump all the plastic into the water. Well, all that that came out of there, that looks uh, looks like something Daisy would do in the backyard, I guess. When Bub Bubba was a, a young fella, he would uh, go by the barber shop every day just to see the barber. And uh, when he went in there one day, the, the barber sitting there talking to the fella and said, Hey, he said, look here, here comes the dumbest kid in the world, you know. And I said, How's that? And he said, Let me show you. So he puts a dollar in one hand. And two quarters in the other. And he uh, said, hey, hey, Bubba, come over here a minute. Which one of these do you want? And Bubba would take the two quarters and walks out. And uh, the barber tells his customer, he says, see there, he's the dumbest kid in the world. He says, he does that same thing every day. So a little bit later, this customer was going down by the drugstore. And this is back when they had a soda fountain in the drugstore, you know. Bubba's sitting up there, you know, drinking a, a root beer float. And the customer comes up and he says, well, uh, hey, uh, Bubba, he says, you know, I saw, I saw what you did down at the barber shop. And he says, don't you know a dollar's worth more than two quarters? And Bubba says, yep, I know that. And the guy says, well, why didn't you take the dollar? Bubba says, because if I take the dollar, the whole game's going to be over. So you see, Bubba was smart when he was a kid anyway. <laughs> at least he had that figured out. All right, folks, I, I hope you all give me a little feedback on what you thought of the, of the new intro and a little bit of feedback on the placement of viewers' pictures in the video. If I put them in the right spot or should have had them all in one place up front or all in one place at the back or whatever. And, uh, and if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Make an old geezer happy, you know. Hey, it don't cost nothing. And... Uh, I appreciate y'all watching and please come back and uh, in the meantime, just keep on keeping on.